got you! Hello my lunatics, I'm Moon Spirit, and welcome to my 2018 year in review. And boy what a year this has been. 2018 has been a experimental year for this channel. Did my first analytical video, my first anime video, and I let my Freddy Krueger persona take over October. But what hasn't changed is that 2018 has some excellent video games. And like in my previous year in review videos, I won't be counting down the best games of 2018, but rather talk about the games I had the pleasure of playing. And just so you know, I couldn't have possibly play every single game that came out due to money and time constraints. And also, sorry Spyro, I won't be counting your remaster because that's not fair to the other games. So, with all that said, here are the games of 2018 I had the pleasure of playing. Kratos has returned, but does this game deliver? Absolutely. This God of War is a far cry from its predecessors. Gone are the hack and slash mechanics of yesteryears, and now Kratos wields an axe and fights with brutal force. And I mean, he's no longer the jumpy, spinny, chain blade wielding machine. Because now his attacks feel like there's actual weight to them. I mean, you can feel the sheer power of every attack he connects. But now he's in the land of the Norse, and he's a dad again. And everything looks great in this game. The frosty mountains, the elven sanctuary, even Kratos' grand beard is so scruffy, his manliness increased by a thousand percent. I love this game, and if you haven't got this game yet, do yourself a favor and buy it. Because this real dad of boy is certified proxy. In fact, I give this game my award for PS4 Game of the Year. Speaking of Far Cry, another Far Cry has arrived, and is it amazing? Well, I personally wouldn't call it amazing. While I do like that the newest locale in Far Cry takes place in a little slice of Americana, the game is okay. Don't get me wrong, the Seed family cult is terrifying. See how these folk don't take kindly to those who don't follow the father. You got the Messiah, Joseph, the baptizing obsessed John, the brainwashing strong art Jacob, and the drug lord and siren, Faith. What do they each have in common? Well, every time you force your way into their territory, they'll capture you, monologue to you, you escape, and repeat. No, really, take their territory in segments, they'll capture you and do everything I just mentioned. Orbean Lake, don't you think? But does that detract it from making Far Cry 5 good? Far from it. You get to fly planes, glide in a wingsuit, hunt or fish for supplies, and liberating the small Montana town from the cultists is always fun. I would be happier if they didn't change the leveling system to have you gain new abilities by performing challenges. I mean, what's wrong with experience points? Changing it to challenge points doesn't feel intuitive, but more as a chore. Overall, Far Cry 5 is only a humble Far Cry Pie. It's far from spectacular, but I still like it. However, who thought it was a good idea to make a dogfight in an FPS a boss battle? Another Kirby has launched, and now he's on Switch. Does anybody remember the buddy system back in Kirby Superstar on SNES? Well, Nintendo has now expanded it to a four-man tag team adventure. Kirby has more powers to choose from, but it's more than having your abilities with different abilities. Now you can use combo powers to do some real damage. You can use stone and ice in tandem to a super curling stone, or wind and cutter to make a devastating boomerang attack, and etc. Some might find the easy difficulty to not warm it up by, but come on! It's Kirby, not Dark Souls! Sometimes you gotta take it easy! Kirby Star Allies is a tag team hit. If you love Kirby, you'll love this game. Finding great indie tiles can be difficult if you don't know where to look, but this right here might be one of the best. Think of this game like Super Meat Boy, except you're a girl climbing a mountaintop and you have a dash ability. 
Basically, this game has very simple controls, yet the game is difficult to master. What really sold me on this game is not its simple yet hard game design, not just its wonderful soundtrack, but how it tackles mental health. I don't want to spoil the game, but let's just say letting go of your inner demons is not always the solution. But if that doesn't entice you, the sheer madness of the unlockable levels might. Not me, I'm perfectly content with the adventure by itself, thank you. That's why Celeste is an absolute zenith, and I'm calling it. Celeste is my 2018 Indie Game of the Year. This year is chock full of Metroidvanias, but this one was made by a one-man crew and his name is Joaquin Sandberg? Joaquin Sandberg? I don't know what. Uh, well, basically, Konjak. And for a game made by one man, it's amazing how well it was put together. The sprite work will amaze you, but so will the music. Seriously, this game is pixelatingly exquisite and every single song is superb. Fights can get exhilarating and hairy, especially the boss battles. You cannot go wrong with this game at all. Even the story can get emotionally investing for a lot of the characters. You won't believe the directions the story takes. And apparently, there's multiple endings for this game too. Iconoclast is a mechanical marvel. But remember, this is just one of many Metroidvanias. Face it, what else can be said? We collectively lost our shit when that Nintendo Direct announced another Smash game. I will say that this is the definitive, penultimate Nintendo Switch game to get. Is it the perfect Smash game? Eh, not really. While I enjoy the world light, the world feels hollow since it feels more like a giant board game to move through, though the spirit fights can keep things very interesting. Seriously, I still yearn for a subspace emissary type campaign. Game can be chaotic if you're not too observant, but that's kind of be expected, right? But classic mode, holy Evangelion, I love the new setup! Specific lineups and special bosses for some characters, I dig that! And the new characters are amazing, and I'm loving Simon Belmont, can't wait for what DLC comes up soon. Nothing can be said, but Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is ultimately smashing! Enough said! That's why Smash is the Switch Game of the Year! This might be my Metroidvania of the year, and it's a sequel to a much lauded game. Seriously, you need to play the first Guacamelee as well! In fact, this game has a lot going for it. Humor, new moves, and a very huge, expansive plot. Seriously, I love this game from intro to its epic end! I thought nothing could be improved upon the first, but I was wrong as they made Juan extra special. One thing for sure is, you'll never look down on chickens ever again. Plus, now that Guacamelee has its own expanded universe, you'll see how expansive it really is. Plus, there is one dimension that I just cannot spoil for y'all. Guacamelee 2 is muy maestro. Por favor, buy this game. En serio, es mucho excelente. Admit, I was not really expecting much of this game. As far as I'm concerned, all I know about this game is that it looks like an indie title that's based off Ninja Gaiden. I never played NES Ninja Gaiden, but I was willing to try it out. And when I did, it caught me off guard in terms of what the game had to offer. Just when I thought I reached a peak, my journey only just begun. When I thought I'd done everything, the game subverts my expectations again. Seriously, this might be the biggest surprise of 2018 for me. The soundtrack is also amazing as well, and you'll be humming some of its tunes, especially the shopkeeper's theme. Speaking of the shopkeeper, your interactions with him and his group of rogue allies are endearing, and you will not believe what kind of conversations you'll have. Regardless, the game is fun, the adventures are unbelievable, and the best part, there's more adventures coming as free DLC. The Messenger is a ninjutsu sensation. Go and buy this game, and I'm sure you'll have a blast.
man, it's been years since Mighty Number no. 9 came out. And what a mighty disappointment that was. But there was a silver lining in the clouds as Catcom has answered our prayers for another Mega Man game. Some of us were ecstatic, oh, but also a bit skeptic because we don't want it to crash and burn. Was this the Blue Bomber's triumphant return? Yes, the Blue Bomber has come back. It's challenging like its predecessors, and it's glorious. Even some of the levels are well designed. Except for that one part in Impact Man stage and most of the Bounce Man stage. But Mega Man has new gadgets up its robotic sleeve in the form of the double gear system that helps him become faster or powerful. But be warned because even the Robot Masters also use them too. Either way you slice it, I haven't had this much fun with Mega Man in a long while. Granted that the last Mega Man I played was 7 and 8. Mega Man 11 is Mega Magnifique. Here's hoping for Mega Man X9 and Mega Man Legends 3. Maybe? It's been a long time since we had a very good Spider-Man game, back two console generations ago. <sighs> wow, it's been that long. Now Insomniac Games has taken the wheel of the webhead, but did they deliver a well-polished experience? <laughs> you kidding? This is Insomniac Games, they don't skip on quality or anything. In fact, playing Spider-Man on PS4 is an adventure not to be missed, period. Seriously, the adventure of Spider-Man is incredible, and not to mention, a wholly original plot given the comic book icon's lore. While everyone says you feel like Spider-Man, I say nay! In this game, you are Spider-Man. Swinging through New York City is spectacular. Combat is tight yet responsive. Finding collectibles are their own rewards. Good lord, there is so much to do! I haven't had this much fun since playing Spider-Man 2 on my GameCube. I mean it, this game took me back to my high school days in the best way possible. Spider-Man on the PS4 is amazingly spectacular. With so much confidence, I'm giving Spider-Man on PS4 my title of Game of the Year! If you haven't, GO SEE SPIDER-MAN ENTER THE SPIDER-VERSE! So those are the games that I played, but here's some more games to note. Red Redemption 2 This was not a day one buy for me, primarily because I technically finished only 90% of the first game and didn't want to spoil myself. But regardless, I eventually caved in and bought this, and I'm kinda glad I did. Don't get me wrong when I say kinda, because this game is absolutely gorgeous to behold. Controls feel really stiff, but then again, I only played like an hour or so, but I'm willing to bet I'm in for the ride of my life for this one. Time Spinner Another Metroidvania in the long line of 2018's releases. But is it worth it? <laughs> oh yeah! This game gives me hardcore Castlevania Order of Ecclesia vibes. By that, I mean the combat is really engaging with the numerous orbs, spells, and trinkets to collect. The only difference here is you get to time travel to a past or future timeline. While I do sing its praises, my only complaint is that the game can be a bit easy as I only died once. And unlike many of the other Metroidvanias, this one's a little shorter, clocking in around 6 hours to beat. However, I still say go get this game when you have the time. Pun intended. Dun da da. Another Metroidvania, but this one has the most unique control scheme out of all its contemporaries. In this game, you move by jumping from platform to platform like a missile and finding your feet on either the walls or the ceiling. It's certainly unique and it looks needlessly complex. Believe me, even I couldn't grasp the game's concept of movement initially, but the game is certainly unique in the art style. After all, Dandara takes after a Brazilian hero and it really shows. I will also say the sprite work is beautiful, and the soundtrack can be mesmerizing as well. If you can get past that learning curve, this game is sure to be a great time. Octopath Traveler Another JRPG has arrived, but now it has a very distinctive look to it. This 3D pixelated adventure exudes SNES vibes with its art style, but that can't be all that it has, right? Oh, for sure! The RPG battles thus far are engaging with its break mechanics and all. The music is a banger in all the right places. So far, I've only played like 3 hours or so, and i only just begun my adventure, and I can't wait to continue. That's until I decide to go smash again. So ends another year in review. And as you can tell, there are some games missing. Detroit Become Human. I have a soft spot for David Cage games, but I'll probably find some time to play it, I guess. Monster Hunter World, 
I hear that's the most accessible game in the entire franchise, so maybe sometime in the future? And while I hear Dragon Ball Fighters is a really great fighting game, I'm not really into those type of games myself, if it is DBZ. But 2019 is sure to be a great year. I mean, after all, we got Kingdom Hearts 3, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Double May Cry 5, and Rage 2. But who knows what the future will entail. But that's all the time I have for you all today. So until then, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell. Until then, I'm Moon Spirit saying good night. And here's to 2019, everyone. So let's close it off with a great big dance. Oh, hell no. Not like this. Let's get to some real tunes.